Welcome to the Adam Does Movies podcast. I'm Adam, and today we're going to be talking about movie trilogies, or lack thereof. That's right. I've prepared for you 10 films that had two at least decent, if not amazing, starts, or grossed enough to potentially have a third film, and Hollywood dropped the ball. They pulled the plug. Something happened. Something that's uh, worth, I think, wildly speculating on. So I have prepared 10 because... We always do 10. We do top 10s, much like we do trilogies. That's just the natural order of things in the world. And when it doesn't come to be, well, you know, you get ruffled feathers. You get people a little bit up in arms, and I know I'm one of them. I've been dwelling on some of these films that haven't had a third movie since the beginning of time. Since birth. I came out and I was like, why do we not have Sister Act 3? Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's begin the list. And I want to I want to start by saying by kind of like prepping this whole thing by saying I'm not feeling great. I'm on the precipice of a full blown cold. Tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna feel like crap. I just know it. Hammered shit is coming my way. My son has it. He's ground zero. He's brought this disease into our household. We've remained cold free for like two years. It's been honestly a miracle. And my 11-year-old son decided, hey, I'm going to be in basketball now at the YMCA. And I'm going to be in kids' faces, breathing, touching each other, doing all sorts of things that are bringing the body harm. And now he's brought me harm. And I can feel it coming in. I, I drank some honey for the throat. I uh, had a bunch of water. And, I, you know, I'm just going to let this thing play out. But so my goal is to get this done, get a few other videos in the hopper, in the Dennis hopper. And hopefully that will last throughout the week while I'm dying in bed. These videos will be scheduled out. So it'll be like, oh, hey, Adam's here. He must be doing okay. No, false. Adam's not okay at all. Adam's nursing a cold. He's nursing a headache. He can't talk to save his life. I can barely talk how it is. But okay, enough of that. Let's begin with the first one. I teased it. Sister Act 3. Where is it? Everybody wants to know where is the third Sister Act. Where's Whoopi? I know she's doing The View, or I think she is still. I'm not actually sure what she's doing. But she, she's got to get back, right? In The Habit for the third time. These movies, I did, I did take notes. Uh, Sister Act 2 pulled in $124.6 million at the box office. And that's off a paltry $38 million budget. So this thing tripled its investment. It, it definitely made enough money. The original pulled in $231.6 million. This is a cash cow. Cash Penguins, really, since it's about the nuns. Um, Whoopi has gone on record just recently because there has been a buzz about Sister Act 3 potentially going to Disney+. Plus, which is where good films go to die. Uh, she says she will not reprise her role as Sister Mary Clarence unless Maggie Smith uh, returns. Maggie Smith, who's a spry 88 years young right now. I'm not sure she can get out of bed very well in the morning. I love Maggie Smith, but... What are we doing here, Whoopi? I mean, come on. You're all you're all getting a little too old to be back in the habit. Maggie Smith deserves to rest her weary bones. She's acted her heart out for many years. Let McGonagall take a rest. But if she's up for it, yeah, bring her in. Bring, bring the whole crew in. The heavy set lady who was really funny, who I think lost a bunch of weight, so she's not as funny, just like men. You take off the pounds. Look, look what happened to Newman, Wayne Knight. He was so damn funny when he was jolly and fat. And then he lost all that weight. And what are we doing anymore, Wayne? You're, you're looking out for your health? No. Look out for my humor. Look out for my entertainment. All right, so Sister Act 3 is on my bucket list. It potentially is happening on Disney+. Plus, and then we all lose. All right, next up, Hellboy 3. This is no, this is no Victoria's Secret that Del Toro, uh, Benice Del Toro, and Ron Perlman have been wanting to make the... Wait, is it Benicio Del Toro? That doesn't sound right. Let me look that up. Beni... <laughs> Benicio... <laughs> I don't even know how to spell it. Benicio Del Toro. Yeah, Benicio Del Toro. That's probably also not how you pronounce it, but, uh, you know, that's what you're going to get with me here. Benicio Del Toro and Ron Perlman have wanted to make a third Hellboy for a long time. 
What I noted is it's faced setbacks, including financial troubles and other project commitments. That's very laissez-faire. Despite the director and Ron Perlman's enthusiasm, Hellboy 3 was ultimately shelved due to a lack of financing and studio support. And of course, they rebooted in 2019 with David Harbour. Not good. Not a good film. But the first two Hellboys are. I really, I really dig them. Uh, Hellboy, I think the first is a little stronger, actually, than the second, in my opinion. Um, but I, I still really would like a third to come out, but I don't think it's going to happen at this point. Uh, Fantastic Four. <laughs> the gift that never really gave. Fantastic Four, there was two of these movies by Fox Studios. The film grossed, this is the sequel, $301.9 million worldwide. That's off a budget of 120 to 130 million. That's what I noted. So the movie, the movie didn't do great numbers, but it still, I think, turned a profit. You double your financial investment. Sometimes you have to like two and a half times your investment. Uh, so yeah, it's it's on the precipice of making money. I've I've said precipice twice already in this podcast. That's how you know I'm not feeling well. Due to 20th Century uh, Fox's disappointment with the box office return of Rise of the Silver Surfer, which is, of course, the sequel to the original, a potential third double F is what I'm going to call it for this one time only film and a Silver Surfer spinoff were canceled. They were doing they were they had the cojones to do a Silver Surfer spinoff. What is going on over at Fox? R.I.P. Now it's owned by Disney for the most part. They they tried spinning off all their X-Men shit too, remember? Wolverine had the spin-offs, Magneto was supposed to get a spin-off. They were probably going to do a spin-off of Professor X and Toad and Jubilee and Beast and uh the Pufferfish guy from the third movie. Everybody's getting a spin-off over there, except for no one is. That's unfortunate. So yeah, Fantastic 4 1 and Rise of the Silver Surfer. Um they're not good. They're watchable kind of hot messes. I don't find them, like, either of them too insultingly bad. They're just kind of like, eh. You know, Chris, one of the Chris's is in it. Evans, Captain America. He's the Human Torch. He's really funny. Johnny Storm, I believe, is the the, the character name. You have uh, Jessica Alba. These are really, at the end of the day, Jessica Alba vehicles for me. I'm only there to watch her, which is ironic because she's playing the Invisible Woman. Uh, the dude from The Shield is the rock guy. What's his name? Uh, Michael Chiklis. <laughs> He's in them. And then the guy from Nip Tuck. One of my favorite lines in the first movie is, I always wanted power. It's so weird how that actor says that phrase. It's not like, I always wanted power. Or I always wanted power. It's, I always wanted power. Just this like nonchalant, obvious kind of turn of phrase. Okay. Oh God, my nose is itchy now. You can do audio on this podcast or you can do the visual version so you get to see me like itching my nose, sniffing, wiping snot, coughing, gagging, thrusting, maybe. I did watch Showgirls recently and roasted that, so I'm all about the thrust. Okay, we got Hellboy Down Fantastic Four. We're going to go to... Now, this is fun. These next two on my list both came out the same year. The sequels did. And they came out seven years Nay, nine years, their their first their first installments. So Sin City Three came out in 2014, along with 300 Rise of an Empire. Rise of 301 was in like 2007 or something, like a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Okay, um, ultimately the film Sin City Two grossed 74.1 million off of a 40 million dollar budget. Overseas, the film grossed 84.6 for a total of $158.7 million. That's Sin City 3. That movie did make not very much. Um, and not, I mean, $40 million budget, it made $158 million. That's actually pretty good. That's, that's more than enough to get a third installment I think but no it didn't happen and that's probably fine because it wasn't very good the sequel I like Sin City the original quite a bit it is one of those cases where the trailer was so freaking good that the movie did let me down a little bit in comparison 
But the first Sin City trailer is one of my favorites. It has this awesome rock soundtrack, black and white, noir style footage. You got Bruce Willis pulling out a gun, grabbing onto his bum ticker. Uh, it was just uh, Elba's strip teasing. I mean, my God, I noticed there's a lot of Elba on my list already. I mean, that, that seems fair. No Spy Kids on here, though, because they made, they made a Spy Kids 4 with Jessica Alba, and it's the only one I haven't seen. Although, I don't know if that new one's out on Netflix yet. They rebooted Spy Kids with the original director again, Robert Rodriguez. He rebooted his own movie series. It's bold, and it looks incredibly lame. All right, let's talk about 300 Rise of an Empire. So, Sin City, great. Sin City 2, not so much. I think it might be better than Rise of an Empire, though. I couldn't even get... I tried watching 302, Rise of an Empire, not that long ago with my wife. She was pretty much checked out when she when she saw that Gerard Butler was not in it. I mean, that was kind of mostly why she likes the first one. So then after that going away and seeing that the new lead character was really kind of a, a like a pathetic shell of a man, it, it didn't do anything for her. Eva Green was enough for me to stay invested, but not much. So 300 Rise of an Empire grossed 106.6 million in North America and 231 in other territories with a full total of 337.6 million. I don't know why I needed to write down all these numbers. And the budget was 110 million. So yeah, there, there's enough, I think, of a, a of a financial gain to uh, to allow for a third. And funny enough, when I did look up 303, Zack Snyder reveals in an article that he wrote a third and final chapter, as it were, of 300. But studio Warner Brothers passed because the tentatively titled Blood and Ashes really didn't fit the third movie of the franchise. And the right to say that because Zack Snyder himself admits that Blood and Ashes really isn't a 300 movie. It's about King Arthur and it's a love story and it kind of goes on a tangent in a different area and he wrote it during uh, COVID times. So yeah, they're, they were probably right to pass. I also think Zack Snyder's not a very good writer. He co-wrote the first 300, of course, based on the Frank Miller novel, graphic novel. Um, I think doing your own thing is a mistake when it's Snyder. Snyder's decent at helping out in the writing department and obviously is a, a vision and he's good behind the lens of a camera and direction and whatnot, but no, let's keep him away from pen and pad if possible. It doesn't sound like 303 is going to happen anytime soon. They'll probably reboot at some point because there's money to be made in those mountains. We got Gremlins 3 next. God, what a banger of a soundtrack. When released into theaters, this is what I, I wrote, I assume it makes sense. On June 15, 1990, Gremlins 2, the new batch, was a box office disappointment, grossing only 41.5 million on a budget of 30 to 50 million. Yeah, that's not making enough money. The original grossed $212.9 million in 1984. 84 to 90, so you have a six year gap in between. That's too long. That's too much time passing by. Not helping matters is the sequel was way more off the wall. Looked a lot different than the first one, which was more of a horror comedy. The sequel is just like a straight up parody comedy of itself. I enjoy both of them immensely for very different reasons. But uh, obviously, mainstay, uh, like mainstream fans did not because they didn't check it out. That, that, that seems like a cut and dry reason why we don't have a third one. But wait, there's more. IMDb lists, as I looked up. Gremlins 3, Curse of the Mogwai, is a sequel of Gremlins 1984. What? It's a sequel of Gremlins 1984. Okay, what are we doing here? It was written by Chris Columbus. All right, he's directed a lot of good stuff. Harry Potter, for instance. And Carl Ellsworth. And counts on Steven Spielberg as its executive producer. It is scheduled for release December of 2023. Yeah, that did not happen. That is not happening for sure. That's this year, IMDb? I don't think so. Homie, don't play that. We're only a few months away from that, bro. There's nothing on Gremlins 3. So this is what we call a placeholder movie thing in IMDb. It's called the placeholder movie thing. That's the technical term. That means that this is bullshit. 
So we have no word on a Gremlins 3. There was an animated show that hit Netflix just recently. It looks atrocious in my opinion. It's a, a kitty kind of take on Gremlins uh, about, about um, Gizmo's past or something. He's fighting monsters. It really doesn't resemble anything to do with Gremlins. It's just weird. And I can't talk again. All right, we are getting there. National Treasure 3. How did this not happen? And some of you might be saying, but Adam, there is a National Treasure 3. It's on Disney Plus. And it stars a strong female lead. And for the National Treasure franchise, let's be honest, it's about time. Nobody watched that movie. Nobody wants to see a movie that has a different strong male lead that isn't Nicolas Cage. This is a Cage vehicle. We like him going over the top talking about stealing the Declaration of Independence, having his Indiana Jones-esque adventures in the city with his ragtag crew of people. I don't want some descendant of his or a daughter or whatever the hell they came up with. And I certainly don't want it straight to Disney Plus because those are synonymous with garbage nine times out of 10. So what happened? Original came out in 2004. It grossed 347.5 million. Book of Secrets. Came out in 2007. A nice three-year gap. That's good. And Book of Secrets, not to be confused with Book of Shadows, which was a Blair Witch Project sequel. That's not on the list. I don't think they made a Blair Witch 3. I know they did like a, a reboot, I think. Blair Witch, it was just called again. Maybe that was the third one. You never know with Hollywood naming conventions if it's a sequel, a reboot, uh, a soft reboot, as it were. There's, there's different terminology. A sidequel. A prequel, a proquel. Okay, uh, wh where was I at? Six months later. Okay, so after the sequel comes out, it's announced six months later that producer Jerry Bruckheimer confirms National Treasure 3 is in development. But according to Nicolas Cage himself, the underwhelming performance of a few of his other movies unrelated to National Treasure kind of tamed down excitement and expectation and Disney decided to walk away. I haven't seen any concrete evidence as to why Disney pulled the plug on a third national treasure because the second one actually made more than the first. Uh, outside of some of the others on this list, that's a rarity. A lot of the movies that I've talked about so far, the sequel did not generate as much. Um, so you have, a, you have a movie franchise that's very much full stream ahead, full steam ahead as well, stream and steam at the same time, and then you pull the plug. It's just asinine to me. Who knows though? Here's one that makes sense. Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass 1 and 2. Kick-Ass 1 solid. I just re-watched it with my son. He was super excited to see an R-rated comic book movie. Thought it was really cool. Second movie we have not watched yet. I remember being very underwhelmed by it. Very disappointed. Especially since Jim Carrey's in it. Kind of playing a cool, tough-as-nails brawler. The What do we have? We have a three-year gap on these ones, too. I don't believe Vaughn came back for the sequel. He directed the first one, Matthew Vaughn. He did not do the sequel, which looked noticeably worse on all fronts. Worse music, worse visuals. It seemed like the budget was slashed. I don't know what happened. Also, all the actors <laughs> aged like 12 years in the span of three years. Chloe Grace Moretz went from a like an eight-year-old to a 22-year-old. It is crazy, the, the leap in their physical appearance in between movies it, it was it's nuts and so that doesn't translate well well for hit girl either so what what do you do if you make a kick-ass three now chloe grace moretz is like 30 some years old she's playing hit woman at this point maybe there's something like that in the comics they can play off of but this just does not look like it's gonna happen let's see what we got here sequel only made despite receiving mixed reviews oh wait i i kind of like wrote this down wrong what do we earn? It earned 60.8 million on a 30 million. I had to fly, fly in front of my mouth when I was talking. Why is there a bug in here? Get out of here, bug. Okay. It earned 60.8 million on a $30 million budge short for budget. The first film grossed 96 million. Okay. So these movies don't do like amazing numbers, but they're, they're cheap to make, right? Practical effects for the most part. Okay. Not too long ago. This was back in 2021, I believe. Things looked hopeful that the wheels would again be, uh, begin cranking to life on Kick-Ass 3. In the span of a single month, 
Miller indicated that previous hopes for Kick-Ass 3, at least as fans anticipated it, were all but dead. While Matthew Vaughn, in a separate update, told Collider that a big reboot was in the works in two years' time, around right now. Around right now. Describing it as so fucking nuts that I can't talk about it. I believe what they're waiting for is to get the rights back. So there's been a lot of exchanging of properties and who owns what. Disney probably owns Kick-Ass at this point. I don't know. I could look. I'd rather speculate and make other people do the work for me. <laughs> Maybe I just don't care that much. Kick-Ass, I think, was good enough, even in the sequel department, that it could have got a third. But maybe at this point, it is best to just start over. This is one of the biggest head-scratchers of all. The Amazing Spider-Man 3. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't like The Amazing Spider-Man 2 in the slightest. Visually, it looks pretty fantastic, but... I think the story is a disaster. I think pretty much everything else about it is kind of miserable. It's way too long. It's way too melodramatic. Not for me. Even though I like the, the Tobey Maguire ones. Those are incredibly over-the-top dramatic. Regardless, this movie made $709 million. How do you pull the plug when a movie's making that much money? Sony looked at it and thought, okay, well, the fan reception's terrible. It actually made less than the original Amazing Spider-Man, which was in the $850 million range. And the American sales only accounted for like 30% of the gross. So Americans are losing interest in this property. Um, it's making less than the original. So by all you know accounts, it's going to do worse every time. They did, however, introduce the Sinister Six. They kind of MCU'd this thing, built up a lot of characters for the third installment and going forward. So you would imagine that like throwing Dr. Octopus back in and some of these other more popular characters would get people to the theaters. But no... Sony said, we're not doing it, we're going to start over, and now we have Venom and, and, and Morbius and all these trash movies that they're putting out because they don't really care about the quality, it turns out. It really is about the bottom line. And they do have very high expectations for how their movie properties perform. And for Sony, Spider-Man is major, major moolah. They need that guy to perform at his top. And if he's not... We just reboot again. We just keep rebooting until that fucker gets the web, that web money that we need. The last one, and this one is truly kind of sad for me. I'm, I'm bummed they haven't done it yet, but Sherlock Holmes 3. Where is the trilogy completion? I like these movies. Guy Ritchie did a good job. Robert Downey Jr. is always wonderful. He plays well with Jude Law as Holmes. Rachel McAdams is nice in the first one and oddly goes missing right away in the second one. I really don't know what happened there. I did try looking that up and I can't find shit about why Rachel McAdams is barely in the sequel. I mean, we're talking a glorified cameo. Regardless, Game of Shadows came out in 2011. These films both each brought in, both each, that's redundant. They both brought in over 500, over half a mil, half a billion, over half a billion dollars each. This is a very solid property that's ripe for more. Robert Downey isn't losing a step. He was just in uh, Oppenheimer, Barbenheimer recently. He was great in that. He's a well-rounded actor. Get him back as Sherlock. And I like how Guy Ritchie infuses the the cool detective angle with his more like snatch style filmography. You have the slow motion calculated fight scenes. Plus you have some of the smart dialogue and the scripts that weave in and out the mysteries and the clues. And I eat it up. I want Sherlock 3. 2011 was the last one? Come on. Let Robert Downey do this again. And come on. Guy Ritchie needs a win. He needs a box office win. I haven't seen The Covenant or whatever the hell his last movie was called. I heard it's really damn good. And I do intend on watching it soon. Just haven't found the right time yet in between all the other stuff I'm doing. But it is on my radar. But financially, I don't think it did very well. So we need Guy Ritchie back making money. We need Robert Downey back with, with, the, with the jacket on, the top hat, uh, the pipe, solving mysteries. Those are my 10. Now, I do have a bonus, a double feature of sorts. Because I think these movies are just stupid fun and it'd be nice to get a little bit more. We have Escape from New York slash LA. Two movies. Basically, 
one movie. <laughs> Escape from LA is kind of a soft reboot of Escape from New York. Same basic plot, different location. Um, I wanted an escape from, uh, I don't know, Canada. Escape from Las Vegas would actually be pretty cool. Let's get an escape from Las Vegas in the mix. Um, and I want, I want Snake Plissken back. I need Snake Plissken back. That's the bottom line. And Crank 3, Jason Statham proves that he can be in the most god-awful shit and turn a profit. Turn some money. Meg 2 made a dumb amount of cash. It's a stupid movie. Jason Statham's killing it. Put him in Crank 3. Let him finish out his legacy film. Get Amy Adams back. What's Amy doing? She's not doing shit. Get Amy Adams back in the mix. Bring Crank back home. All right, let us have some fun with this again. And if you don't know what the Crank movies are, that's okay too. <laughs> They're basically the transporter again, but somehow even more insane. All right, those are my top 10 plus the bonus trilogies that never got resolved that I guess, you know what, some of these I don't care that they got resolved. I just kind of scratch my head as to why they didn't. Like National Treasure 3, like The Amazing Spider-Man 3, like uh, Hellboy 3. I mean, I guess Hellboy 2 didn't do very well, but Del Toro's a, a big enough name. And I think that with the technology where it's at, they could make something pretty damn cool on a decently small budget if they wanted. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours. If you're watching this on YouTube, I encourage you to leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, share, notification bell, all of that shit. Tell me, Adam, this is a third movie they never made and I, I want to know why. Or I can't believe they didn't finish this off. They had a good thing going. Where are we at with the third movie? Put it in the comment. I do push these out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, other podcasts every morning on Monday at 8 a.m. So if you want to hear it early, you can hear it there first. On YouTube, I do the, the video premiere thing where I'm in the comments chatting with you on the live chat. And we're watching this together or listening together, whatever. And that usually goes up around noon. So you're going to have a nice lunch with me. We'll have a nice meal together. All right, that's it. If you want to support the channel, you can join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Become a member there. You get exclusive access to 300 videos and counting. Plus, you get to throw out a roast recommendation on my YouTube channel where I roast terrible movies. If you're a Mithril level member, same with on YouTube via the YouTube join button. So there's ways to support the channel, ways to give back, and uh, hopefully you do because I have a feeling I'm going to be knocked out. So a couple extra Patreons or YouTube join members, a little extra support might heal me faster. Hopefully that's the case. All right, take care.